G Funk here. I'm gonna do a video about the Sacramento Kings. Uh, just give my two cents on the situation that's going on and um, share some memories from uh, the good times that I had watching this team play. Um, if you don't know about the situation that's going on, uh, the team has been sold. The Malou family has sold the Kings to. A uh, group in Seattle for a record price, 500 million or something like that. And um, you know, we we don't know what's going to happen, whether they're going to go. I know that the mayor has came out and said that he's going to try and get a uh, you know a group to come together and buy the team and keep the team here in Sacramento. Um, I just want to say that you know, Seattle. I know that they want a team really bad up there. Um, and it was an absolute crime what happened to them that the NBA took the Sonics away from them. Just, just an absolute crime in my opinion. Um, you know they definitely deserve a team up there, but you know we deserve our team here too. You know we're some of the most crazy and loyal fans. Um, you know for 19 to 28 seasons we've sold out Arco Arena or what's now called Sleep Train. Even when the team, you know, was bad and wasn't in the playoffs, I mean, I think we've only had eight playoff teams, eight or nine playoff teams or something like that. And, um, you know, 19 sellouts, 19 seasons of sellouts, you know. That just shows what kind of fans we got here. And um, hopefully everything works out for us and, and we get to keep our team and Seattle, I don't know, maybe they can get an expansion team or something. I don't know. I mean, but they definitely deserve a team up there, just not ours, <laughs> you know. Uh, growing up in the city, you know, like I said, Sacramento is, you know, the Kings, that's our only professional team here. And, um, you know, if they were to go, that would be a big hit to us, you know. There'd be like 600 to 1,000 jobs lost or something like that, you know. And we, we need our team here, man. We love our team. As far as some stories that I want to share, um, you know, I remember going to games as a kid, seeing guys like Mitch Richmond, uh, Tyus Edney, Bobby Hurley, uh, Walt Williams, Wayman Tisdale. Um, man, I can go on and on. Sharonis Marcellonis. Uh, Spud Webb, uh, so many guys, you know, that I remember coming in and out of here. <laughs> Brian Grant, man, so many guys. You know, when I was a teenager, around 15 years old, I think it was 99, when we traded Mitch Richmond to Washington for Chris Weber, we ended up getting Webb, uh, a lot of Divots came that year. We drafted Jason Williams. We picked up free agents like Scott Pollard, uh, John Barry, Vernon Maxwell. We got a new coach, Rick Adelman. Uh, Paige Stoyakovich, who we drafted in 97, uh, finally came over. <laughs> and, um, you know, things just clicked, man. I mean, it just happened overnight for us. The, key, the team was just killing out of nowhere, you know. And I can personally say... You know, for, for myself and, you know, some of my closest friends that I still keep in contact with, um, you know, we grew up together and um, it wasn't like a, the best neighborhood we grew up in. Is, there was a lot of crime and, you know, gang, it was, you know, gang activity, drugs and, you know, things like that were going on. And, you know, around that time was when the Kings started getting good and they started bringing excitement to the city. Um, 
you know, I can honestly say for myself that if, if it wasn't for that run they had or that they started right there, you know, we all could have fell into that cycle of just doing things we shouldn't have been doing, you know, instead of going out and doing doing those sort of things, you know, we was playing basketball, <laughs> you know, we was out there playing like the Sacramento Kings, that's what we was doing, you know, instead of, like I said, doing bad things, they really did change my life for sure, man, I mean, we was out there from sun up to sun down playing ball, you know, there was, there was times where some of the neighbors would call the cops on us. Because we was out there playing basketball all night long, you know, the ball be bouncing, we be out there yelling at each other and stuff, you know, but, hey, like I said, it kept us out of trouble, and, um, some other memories I got, I can remember 2003, I think it was, LeBron James' first year when he got drafted, and, um, his very first game was against the Kings at Arco Arena when he was playing for the Cavaliers. And Nike uh, did a commercial in Sacramento at the arena. Uh, and it was basically about, you know, his first game. And, I mean, I don't know. I mean, if you guys haven't seen the commercial, go look it up. Um, I was actually in that commercial. I mean, you can't really see me, but I was there. I was one of the, I don't know what you want to call them, extras or whatever. I was... One of those people that was supposed to be acting like I was at the game and cheering for the Kings or whatever, you know. I remember being there for about 10 hours that day. It took forever. But, um, you know, it was fun to be there and watch how, you know, the commercial was made and see these guys act it out on the court and stuff. I think George Gervin was there in the crowd. I can remember seeing him there. Somebody else, like Damon Wayans. Um. It was just fun. Another special memory I got is um, during the, the run that we had when we played the Lakers 2002 Western Conference Finals. Um, my uncle was getting married at the time down in Los Angeles. And we all went down there for his wedding. And it just so happened that we were down there the same time that the Kings were down there playing the Lakers for games three and four. And um, game three, I think we won. We you know, I think we won by like 10, 12 points or something like that. And it looked like we were going to do the same thing in game four until Robert Ory hit that shot, you know. <laughs> Lakers came back on us and Ory ended up with the ball in his hands behind the three-point line and knocked it down at the buzzer. And Oh, man. But um, earlier that day before the game started, you know, me and about maybe, there was probably about 10, 12 of us all together. We went to Disneyland and... We all had our Kings gear on, and, you know, fans were, you know, making little comments here and there, but it wasn't until we all decided to get on one ride together, I forgot what ride it was down there, but we all decided to get on a, on a roller coaster, and, you know, we all had our Kings gear on, whatever, jerseys, shirts, hats, t-shirts, you know, whatever, and as soon as it was our turn to get on the, um, the roller coaster, <laughs> I mean, those fans that were there, I mean, they booed us like we were actually the Sacramento Kings, like we were the team there, you know? Oh, man. I mean, it was so loud, you know? It seemed like everybody in Disneyland was booing us, you know? <laughs> oh, it was fun, but good, good memories there. Um, one of my last uh, really, really fun memories with the Kings was... I believe the last year that we made the playoffs was um, 2006, and um, we played the San Antonio Spurs first round. I think we lost both games, and the first game we got blown out. Second game was a close game. We almost won it, and they ended up, I think Brent Barry hit a three or something to give them the lead. And they ended up winning the game, and then first game at Arco, I remember I got a call from my girlfriend. She was my girlfriend at the time, and now she's my wife. <laughs> but um, she called me. She's like, hey, you know, I got some tickets here. They're standing room only. Do you want to go to the game tonight? I said, you know I want to go to the game tonight. So we go, and I mean, I'm telling you, standing room only, I don't know if any of you have had standing room only tickets, but it's, you know, you're standing at the very top, you know. You don't even have a seat. <laughs> you're standing up, and that's where we were at. And, I mean, it was a good back-and-forth game. And I can just remember watching, I 
the end when Mike Bibby stole the ball from Ginobili. He actually fouled the shit out of him. They didn't call it. But, um, you know, he got the steal, kicked the ball up to uh, Kevin Martin. I think he was like a rookie that year or something. And um, he ended up taking the ball to the bucket. He had Tim Duncan right on him. And um, the ball just... uh, ball just hung up there forever it seemed like you know but it bounced around like two three times and I finally dropped in and I just remember going nuts man I mean the whole stadium went nuts it seemed like the roof was about to blow off of that place because you know we had suffered so many losses that way at the buzzer and um, we finally got one our way you know I could just remember running from the very top of the stadium, running all the way down the stairs, and just, I mean, people going crazy. I mean, I'm running into people I don't even know. And, you know, I'm jumping up and down. I'm hugging them. I'm just like, yeah, yeah, you know, and <laughs> just giving people high fives. Like I said, these complete strangers, you know, I don't even know these people. And, um, man, that was that was one hell of a game. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm proud to say that I was there to see that one, you know. And, um... I mean, I could go on and on and on about stories with the Kings, but those are some of the ones that stick out to me, you know. Um, but the team, it's got to stay here, man. We got to, as fans, if you're a loyal fan of the Kings, man, we got you got to get out there and support the team, man. You have to. Um, we got to show, you know, whoever Kevin Johnson is, is lining up to buy this team, we got to show them that, you know, we're going to support the team if they plan on buying it, you know, and and build that stadium downtown where it belongs, you know. So, I mean, I just want to give my two cents on the situation and share some memories with you guys, you know, little Kings fans out there or NBA fans, you know. If you guys want to, you know, get at me, drop me comments, let me know what you think. Uh, If you have any personal stories that you want to share with me, you know, go ahead and drop them down there in the comment section. Um, you know what I'm saying? Born and raised in Sacktown, baby. You know, we got to keep our kings here. So, you guys go ahead and get at me. And um, this is G-Funk. I'm signing off. And uh, I'll talk to you guys on the next video. Peace.